Welcome to the Banega Swast India podcast. Our focus is on creating a holistic and healthy India for each and every one. Our goal is one world hygiene, where citizens, individuals, society and governments work together to ensure health for all and foster global unity for a healthier tomorrow. Agriculture is one of the largest sources of livelihoods in India. Nearly 70% of the rural households still depend primarily on agriculture for their livelihood, with 82% of farmers being small and marginal, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization (FAO). However, there are several problems faced by the smallholders when it comes to enhancing their crop production and selling their produce, which further affects food accessibility and security. My name is Ambika Singh Kama and on the Banega Swast India podcast we have with us Takayuki Hagiwara Food and Agriculture Organization representative who will discuss the challenges faced by the small scale farmers and the strategies that can help them. Thank you Mr Hagiwara for joining us. Can you start with telling us about the difficulties small scale farmers have been facing in India? Farmers in India face several challenges. and uh, the biggest challenge in the future is the climate change we need to equip them with the climate resilient agriculture practices in the future uh weather is another another issues that the farmer will face the uh, too much water or less water so the, it's very unpredictable so we need to really give them good information to the farmers the weather patterns and then coincide with the uh, their uh, crop management system lack of access to credit uh, due to the lack of the legal land holdings uh, many of the uh, rural smallholder farmers have no access to credit in order to get the credit you have to have the document ready to present to the banks but uh, that's the major major problems still the many of the uh, uh, small farmers uh, they don't have the uh, legal document so that's the very important issue that we need to address uh that also leads to the uh, uh alta migration of male farmers mr hagiwara what about the female farmers what are the obstacles they have been facing for years uh nowadays if you visit the uh, uh rural areas you encounter a lot of female farmers but they don't have the uh, the paper uh their names are not on the paper so they don't have the access to credit and that's the another main point that we need to consider for the future um also you know because of the uh, um several customary sort of the uh, uh practice in the f- uh, in the past female farmers are facing also the customary or the uh, local discrimination practices and that they are also faces the big challenges of the uh, farming for example they cannot uh do the uh, uh cultivation with the tractors they are not allowed to uh pro- you know run the uh, tractor for example that's uh, mainly done by the female uh, farmers so that sort of the things is still happening in, in india this is concerning mr hagiwara what other issues hinder the crop production Another challenge is that the small folders facing are uh lack of access to the quality seeds. Normally the farmer harvest uh seeds or the food and they store the seeds for the next year. And then the, during the uh long period of the uh, uh time those seeds are becoming the poor quality. so uh the response of those low quality seeds uh is very poor so uh lack of the access to seeds is another uh, big challenge that a small holder face and that they don't have the uh, refrigerator at the home so they cannot store the uh, uh seed properly so that affected the germination of the seeds um also uh important thing is that the uh, the value chain you know that we do a lot of the uh, production uh, uh assistance but when they produce the uh, something 
they need to have a market. And then they have to depend on the middleman, aggregators. Aggregators play a very important role. Uh, they provide the cash, but also they ask the uh, high interest rate. That really undermines the livelihood of the uh, uh, smallholders. So um, we really need to think about how to uh, navigate the, uh, um, the farmers to have a better access to the market. And that leads to the uh, better uh, development of the uh, value chains. FAO works extensively towards the welfare of the farmers. Mr. Hagiwara, could you tell us how the organization is helping them in enhancing the food production? You know, the, um, in India, about 60% of agriculture depend on the rain fed. So it's a mercy, they are mercy on the weather. Um, FAO works intensively uh, on the weather predictability. And uh, farmers need to be informed about the weather, when they sow, when they can harvest, and then when they can dry the, uh, their crops. So crop forecasting, uh, the weather forecasting, they're very important. And that is what we are doing a lot in the, uh, um, some, some states, such as the uh, uh, Karnataka, uh, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Himachal Hima, Pradesh. Um, so uh, FAO is um, uh, working toward the uh, increasing efficiency of the water use and uh, regulate the uh, water, uh, asking the farmers to consider the um, uh, less use of water. So that's the, the one point that uh, we would like to mention. Banega's First India podcast will be back after a short break. Watch out for our new Banega Swast India video podcast, Swasthya Mantra, the first ever public health and hygiene podcast. The podcast is live on Spotify, Apple and YouTube in English and in Hindi. Welcome back to Banega Swast India podcast. Well, these are the initiatives that can help farmers increase their production. Mr. Hagiwara, could you shed some light on how the government has a critical role to play in supporting a farmer? Government plays a very, very important role and has to play a very important role. Water is a common resource and uh, government can regulate or government can also uh, incentivize the farmers uh, to ask them to use less water. And uh, if you, as I said, the 60% uh, of the land is rain fed. And there is a little bit in the uh, uh, spaces for the future investment in irrigation. And the irrigation requires a huge investment. And that's only the public sector or that the government can invest in. Farmer cannot invest into the uh, huge irrigation scheme. So the, the role of the government is very, very huge. Mr. Hagiwara, farmers in India really depend on traditional methods of growing the crop. But how about integrating digital technology with agriculture? How will it enhance crop production and benefit the small-scale farmers? If you see, if you go to the field, or a farmer goes to the field, they see the plants and they feel that there are how much growth uh, is being, uh, the plant, how much they are growing. It's really based on the experiences. However, digital agriculture or the digital information give you more precise information. And based on the precise information, they can add the fertilizer, all the water, all the, uh, the pesticide or herbicide or whatever they have. So uh, precision uh, agriculture is the one thing that the, uh, uh, is coming. And the farmer will be equipped with the, uh, those precision agriculture. And that's very important and uh, the things that we can promote in the future. Um, now, also farmers also need to understand the, their soils. Uh, without the understanding of the soil, they may not be able to uh, select the uh, right uh, the crops and also the right amount of the fertilizer to be applied. 
and also the uh, soil requires the uh, carbon contents or the uh, some other uh, other important elements and uh, these information can be uh, generated through the uh, uh, satellite imaginaries and uh, that translated to the uh, uh, digitally and then given to the farmers and uh, with the very precise information so that is coming and then the farmers uh, will be equipped with the, uh, those information and that we hope that the farmer will be able to uh, uh, practice the, uh, their uh, croppings uh, better. So we can see that digitizing agriculture can lower risk, boost incomes and raise production. Thank you so much Mr. Hagibara for providing a detailed insight. Well, that's it on the Banegas West India podcast this week. If you have comments, queries or suggestions on the topic we discussed today, or issues you would like us to cover in the future, do write to us on BSI podcast at the rate ndtv.com. Remember, BSI stands for Banega Swast India. You can also connect with us on Banega Swast India handles on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and continue the conversation through the week. Till next week, this is Ambika Singh Kama signing off. Stay healthy and stay safe.